Astro Dark is back for the winter. The sky is clear and dark. Your rig is set up and running and taking pictures. And suddenly you realize, wait, did I automate all the fun out of this hobby? Well, fear not. In this video, I wanna show you four cool, fun things that you can do while you're imaging. Hi, I'm Aaron and welcome to Alaskan Astro. Man, it's been a crazy busy last couple months. Between summer activities, putting moose and fish away in the freezer, on top of just everyday life. So I thought I'd put together a quick video before I disappear again for a little while. Also in fun news, I recently partnered with Agena Astro Products and their affiliate program. So if you want to help the channel a little, you can follow those links in the description and I get a little commission. Agena has been one of my favorite Astro suppliers since I started this hobby a long time ago. Their customer service is great, their shipping speeds are unbelievable, and their website makes it really easy to see what's in stock. All right, let's talk about making astrophotography even more fun. First, I want to talk about live stacking, which is pretty much what the name implies. Stacking your images with software as they come in one by one and watching your image build and get stronger through the night. And specifically, I want to talk about a script called Easy Live Stack. Watching your images come alive is seriously one of the coolest things, and it's also really helpful to make sure that your flats are working if you take that extra little effort to take them before you start shooting. Okay, so this is Easy Live Stack. It's a freely available script, part of the Easy Suite, that runs inside PixInsight and it stacks your images. Now I could make a whole video and dive really deep into Easy Live Stack, but let me just point out some of the highlights. Basically what it's doing is watching a folder where your images are coming in and it stacks them as they come. It also lets you calibrate these images with bias flats or darks, however you're doing it and then you'll see the image build over time here. So let's watch that. Okay, so a new file just showed up. Easy Live Stack is going to star align it, calibrate it, and then add it to this stack. And we're gonna watch how much clearer that image gets. Wow, yeah, isn't that incredible? Just two images versus one, it's already so much clearer. So let's see what happens with our third, fourth, and fifth. Now we're speeding up time. These are five minute subs, but I'm not gonna make you wait that long to watch them all come through. So you can see how even after just four subs, there's a huge difference in the signal to noise ratio, and this target is just really starting to pop out. By the end of the night, depending on what you're shooting, you can get an incredibly clear preview of what you're imaging. Obviously, if we were using a color camera, this image would be in color as it's building. But if we're shooting mono and we're shooting multiple filters in the night, Easy Live Stack can combine those on the fly too, and we can get a color preview, even for narrowband. There's a lot more that I could highlight with Easy Live Stack, but let me just point out one last thing. This little chart here, the noise evaluation graph, is really neat in that it shows the signal to noise ratio as you're adding more and more images, what each one is adding to it, which is really useful because it can kind of show you when it might be time to stop imaging something when you're not really getting any more improvement out of it. If you have a quick network connection, you can send the files straight over to your main editing computer. But personally, I find it easier to just run it right on my mini PC. This is a slow little thing, but live stacking isn't that demanding. But yeah, I just think easy live stack is one of the coolest things in astrophotography, watching an image like this come together, and you can even save these and start them up again another night and build on what you already had before. Do you feel like you're all alone when you're imaging? With the latest versions of Nina, you don't have to. There's a new plugin called Light Bucket that allows you to share where you're taking pictures and what you're imaging. And you can check out where other people are shooting. Think of it like a virtual star party. So this is the home page of Light Bucket. It shows this neat map with a little icon for where each user has been shooting sometime in the last 18 hours in the Northern Hemisphere and even the Southern Hemisphere. And down here is a little thumbnail image of the last shot that everybody took. So you can see where different people are shooting, how much time they're spending on each filter, and you can see some people are having better nights than others. If you go to the map, you can actually click on these targets and bring up information about how much time this person has been spending on that target. You can also click and get to somebody's profile. It shows how many targets, how many different imaging sessions, how many total images and hours uh, they've been doing. And keep in mind that Lightbucket is brand spanking new, so there's hopefully going to be new features that just keep getting added to this. It's just really neat getting to see all your own time logged, 
and getting to check out where other people are shooting, maybe get inspired to shoot something new. To get Light Bucket, you just need to open up Nina, go to the plugins, go to available plugins, find it, and install it. Once it's installed, you just open it up and it gives you some basic instructions on how to get started with it. It's really easy. Next up, time lapse. I love making time lapses and watching the stars rotate through the night and watching my rig follow along with them. It's also useful later for troubleshooting. You can check and see if some clouds pass through or if your dog ran into the tripod in the middle of the night. There's a couple good tools you can use to take your time lapses. If you have a spare planetary camera lying around, these are great for their high sensitivity, ability to take long exposures, and a lot of them come with an all sky lens for those super wide angle fields of view. Another option is this thing, Wise Camera. These little security cameras are really cheap. They only cost like 25 or $30 and they're surprisingly light sensitive, especially this V3 version. Uh, I like to slot it in on this little 3D printed mount made by 3Dbari. Or you could go with a more traditional route and use your DSLR. No matter what gear you're using, think a little bit about how you want to frame up your shot with your rig in the foreground, trees or hills in the midground, and choose how much of the sky you want to be in your shot. As far as image capture goes, it depends on what you're using. For these planetary cams, I like using SharpCap Pro. The Wise cams have their own app, and a DSLR is great with an intervalometer, even the one that's built into a lot of cameras. I find that between a 10 second and a 30 second interval makes for a good length video for the whole night without being too long or too quick. Finally, do some visual observing. Whether you've got a big daub or just a simple pair of binoculars, have fun with it. Maybe try to take a look at the thing that you're imaging if it's possible. Or if you wanna see specific targets, get a book like Turn Left at Orion that teaches you how to star hop to specific things or get a free app on your phone like Stellaria Mobile. Whatever you do, just remember to wear a coat because it finally gets cold out there again.